the strange mysteries of the Caspian Sea. Sprawled out along the edges of European civilization lies one of the great natural wonders of the world, the Caspian Sea. The largest inland lake in the world, the vast, enigmatic Caspian Sea, has long captured the imagination of mankind and has been the birthplace of legends, myths, and numerous mysteries for thousands of years. The ancient Assyrians believed that the lake was from whence the sun rose and set, and the legends of numerous ancient civilizations of the region have been influenced and shaped by this mysterious body of water. Beyond the ancient myths and legends are very real mysteries that have endured through to the modern day, and the lake is pervaded by enigmas both natural and otherworldly. Let us take a tour of the strange wonders of the Caspian Sea. The Caspian Sea is truly a remarkable sight to behold. At 1200 kilometers, 745 miles long, 320 kilometers, 210 miles wide, and with a surface area of approximately 371,000 kilometers squared, 143,200 square miles, it is the largest completely enclosed body of water on Earth. Its waters are slightly saline, around one third the salinity of seawater on average. The Caspian shoreline passes along Azerbaijan. Iran, Kazakhstan, Russia, and Turkmenistan, through terrain as varied as the rugged mountains of the Great Caucasus of Azerbaijan to the west, and the Turkmen and scorched Kazakh deserts to the east. The Caspian is divided into three distinct physical regions, the Northern, Middle, and Southern Caspian, each with its own unique characteristics. The Northern Caspian is the shallowest, comprising the Caspian Shelf and reaching average depths of a mere 5 to 6 meters, 16 to 20 feet. The middle Caspian gets deeper, at an average of around 190 meters, 620 feet, and the southern Caspian drops off considerably into truly epic oceanic depths of over 1,000 meters, 3,300 feet. The depth variation has contributed to thriving, diverse ecosystems, and abundant aquatic life, including valuable fisheries of sturgeon, salmon, perch, herring, and carp, as well as other types of marine life, such as porpoises and seals. The biological diversity has also made the Caspian an attractive settlement area for humankind since ancient times. The lake served as a great provider of food, salt, and oil for peoples throughout history, as well as serving as a convenient alternative mode of transportation to perilous overland routes. The Caspian's rich wealth of resources gave rise to prosperous civilizations and great economies, with many different cultures sharing the region, trading, sharing, and indeed, sometimes going to war with each other. However, there is also a great wealth of mysteries here, spanning everything from mysterious creatures to UFOs, to lost civilizations and treasures. It seems that among all of the fish and other aquatic organisms that live here, the Caspian Sea is home to something else as well. For years, residents along the southern and southwestern shores of the sea have reported seeing some sort of amphibious creature that somewhat resembles a human being. The mystery beast is described as being around 165 centimeters in length, with a large mouth that flows smoothly into the neck without a chin, and large, elliptical eyes set into an earless head, topped with black and green hair. The webbed hands are equipped with formidable looking claws, and the nose is said to somewhat resemble the beak of a dolphin. It has a solid build, with a protruding stomach, and short, heavy arms and legs. Iranians have long known of such a creature, calling it Renuncia, or the master of the sea and rivers, in part because it is said to often be accompanied by large shoals of fish, as well as due to its purported ability to turn water crystal clear simply by swimming through it. It is said that fish can sense when the creature is near, and fresh catches have been known to produce gurgling noises shortly before it makes an appearance. The thing is said to be seen in both in water and on shore. A fairly high-profile sighting of the mysterious marine humanoid was made by the crew aboard the Azuri trawler Baku in March of 2005. According to the captain of the vessel, Gafar Gazanov, 
the creature was first seen swimming parallel to the ship for quite some time. The captain told the Iranian newspaper, Zandage, that they had first taken it to be just some sort of large fish, that is, until they noticed that the fins looked somewhat off, and that it sported hair on its head. It was at that point that they made the shocking discovery that the thing had humanoid arms topped with webbed hands. Shortly after, the thing dove down into the depths out of sight. In their homeland of Azerbaijan, the crew were ridiculed for the story, but the Iranians, with their long tradition of similar creatures in the sea, believed them. The newspaper was subsequently deluged with people coming forward with similar reports of their own. Interestingly, reports of these creatures intensified in correspondence to an increase in offshore drilling in the region, as well as increased seabed volcanic activity in the Balbacera area. Amphibious humanoid creatures are not the only strange creatures said to inhabit the depths of the Caspian Sea. There have been reports of some sort of large, predatory fish prowling the waters as well. In 1998, a fish poacher by the name of Samad Jafarov came forward with a story of some sort of shark-like creature that terrorized him and his companion. The man was out spearfishing with a friend near a place called Fort Shevchenko when they spotted a massive sturgeon that they set their sights on. At that moment, a huge, torpedo-shaped fish rushed out from the depths that they at first took to be a shark. The man reportedly shot a spear into the thing's head but it was unfazed and proceeded to latch onto his legs with fierce jaws. With this weird, giant fish latched onto his legs, the man made his way towards the surface, where crew aboard the boat managed to pull him aboard. He was rushed to a hospital where he received a blood transfusion and had his leg amputated below the knee. When asked about his mysterious aggressor and what it might be, he was inclined to think it was a shark. Are there sharks in the Caspian Sea? According to common knowledge, no. The true culprit remains unknown. What other mysteries lurk under the waves of the Caspian Sea? It just so happens that the area is rife with purported lost cities. The region has long been the stage on which ancient civilizations and cities have mysteriously disappeared. Off the coast of northern Dagestan, lies the capital of what was called Khazar Khaganat, the fabled city of Attil. This city flourished from the 9th to 12th centuries AD, and then simply vanished without a trace. Further south, we can find the city of Durbent, which sported massive walls that extended up to 300 meters out to sea, and were said to be crafted by the hands of giants. The purpose of such walls, and indeed how they were made in the first place, has remained a mystery. Along the coast of Azerbaijan, in the Bay of Baku, lies a castle known as Sabayal Castle, also called Bayal Castle or Bayal Rocks, which was originally built in the early 13th century on a small island around 300 meters offshore and now lies completely submerged in water. This castle has been a part of Azerbaijani legends and folklore for centuries. It is a 180 a 40 meter structure from around the 13th century with a trapezoidal shape and sturdy outer walls that were up to 2 meters thick, suggesting it may have been a defensive structure. Additionally, there were semicircular towers surrounding the castle of indeterminate purpose, but no one really knows just who built the castle or for what reasons. There are many stories surrounding the mysterious structure. One is that Alexander the Great wanted to conquer a city with a magnificent castle on the banks of the Caspian Sea, but the people steadfastly refused to yield. Alexander the Great asked for advice from his teacher, Aristotle, who pointed out that the city was located below sea level, and with only a single large stone preventing water from inundating it. A special liquid was designed to dissolve the rock, and it is said that the water came bursting in to inundate the city and its castle. Another legend suggests that there was an enormous earthquake in 1306 which rose the sea level and buried the castle underwater. Yet another idea lies within the name of the castle itself, 
Sabaeal. There was once said to be a tribe of people in a land called Saba, which is mentioned in the Quran. It is said that the people of this land worship the sun, and for his disobedience to the one true God, they were punished by having their land submerged by the sea. Archaeologists have determined that the castle once had nine rooms, two of them with hearths. An inscription places the date of construction at 1244 to 1245. Among the ruins were also found fragments of some sort of pottery, which was probably used for cooking, as well as pieces of pipe, which are surmised to have possibly been water pipes. Within one room was found an ancient coin which was mined during the rule of Shravansha Faraburs III in the first part of the 13th century, as well as various other copper coins, some of them inscribed with the names of Faraburs bin Garzasp and Asif and Nasir, who were the Shravanshas, or Muslim rulers of ancient Azerbaijan, from 1180 to 1225. A bizarre feature of the castle ruins is that they are surrounded by nearly 700 large stone panels, bearing Persian and Arabic script carved right into the rock, as well as decorations and various images of animals such as oxen, dogs, camels, numerous mythical creatures, even human faces, and a life-size depiction of a warrior atop a horse. Additionally, there are genealogies of various savanshas written in stone, and it is thought that many of the carved animals symbolize these powerful ancient rulers. All of the carvings are meticulously done, obviously crafted by skilled hands. There is some evidence to show that there were once life-sized stone sculptures of animals, such as horses and lions, on the premises as well. As to the purpose the castle may have served, it is mostly thought to have been some sort of defensive structure due to the towers and unusually thick outer walls, although to defend from whom or what remains a mystery. Some have suggested that it may have been some sort of fire-worshipping temple used by the Zoroastrians, a customs office, a monastery, or even a stop-off point for land caravans or caravanserai. However, for all of the theories, to this day, it is a complete mystery as to who built the castle, for what purpose, or why it is sunk beneath the waves. The Institute of History at the Academy of Science spent 40 years from 1949 to 1969 studying the underwater castle. Yet, even after extensive research, we were unable to ascertain the answers to these questions. And so Sabael Castle remains a complete enigma. In modern times, the castle has seen a lot of wear from the elements and the fact that it has been submerged for centuries. So only its foundation remains, and although some have been brought up for study, many of the large, inscribed stones remain at the bottom of the Caspian. Due to the dramatic fluctuations in sea level of the Caspian Sea over the centuries, sometimes as much as seven meters, a large number of mysterious ruins of structures and even entire settlements have been lost beneath the waves, and these submerged ruins have become a magnetic for undersea archaeology. The Caspian Sea holds mysteries not only in its depths, but also in the skies above. There have long been reports of mysterious lights in the skies here, and the region is the origin of one of the more interesting UFO encounters in recent years. On August 28, 1991, at around 5 p.m., an enormous, unidentified object that measured an estimated 600 meters long and 110 meters in diameter suddenly appeared over the Caspian Sea. The object was picked up on a Russian radar tracking station positioned on the Mangishlak Peninsula, which tracked it to an altitude of 21,000 feet and moving at a speed of around 960 miles per hour. The Russian military was perhaps understandably alarmed and sent four MIG-29 fighter jets on aggressive orders to engage the mysterious craft and get it to land. If the craft refused to land, the pilots had been instructed to shoot it out of the sky. Upon approaching the unidentified object, it soon became obvious that it was not any type of known aircraft. Pilots described it as being a massive, elongated object that was shiny metallic gray in color. And it was also noticed that there were strange green symbols 
written on the outside of the craft that were not in any recognizable language. Attempts were made to make radio contact with the object, but when these were ignored, the fighters were ordered to open fire. As soon as they fired a warning shot at the craft, all of the instrumentation related to the weaponry and other electrical systems allegedly malfunctioned, forcing two of the MIGs to return to base immediately. It was reported that as these pilots left the area, all systems returned to normal and they regained control of their jets. The remaining MIGs continued to attempt to fire upon the mysterious craft, but they too soon lost most control of their planes and were also ordered back to the base as the gigantic UFO continued unhindered. Meanwhile, the tracking station on the ground was maintaining radar contact with the object and noted that it assumed a zigzag course and that its speed began to increase dramatically until 45 minutes later it suddenly vanished from the radar. The story would only get more bizarre from there. About a month later, at the end of September, local rumors began to spread of an enormous object that had crashed into the Tian Shan Mountains of Kyrgyzstan on Russia's border with China in a craggy, rocky gorge called Shaita Mazar, which roughly translates to Grave of the Devil. The rumors claimed that those who had stumbled upon the crash site had experienced burns on their bodies and their watches had gone haywire. A local expedition of skilled mountaineers, joined by the Russian UFO group, Sakofan, was mounted to try and locate the downed object, but weather conditions eventually caused them to turn back after weeks of turning up no sign of the crash. The region's poor weather also caused the deadly crash of a Russian Air Force helicopter that was tasked with finding it. When the Russian Air Force allegedly finally found the crashed object after weather conditions cleared up, it was reported that members of the expedition experienced severe anxiety and feelings of horrific dread when approaching to around 1,000 meters from the site. At a distance of around 800 meters, all members were beset by a profound state of physical fatigue and potent nausea to the point that some people collapsed where they stood or were unable to go any further. At around 600 meters from the crash, all watches, cameras, and other electrical equipment either malfunctioned or stopped altogether, with videotape footage being completely erased. Anyone who soldiered on and made it to around 500 meters of the craft reportedly began to display nasty radiation burns, and this was about as close as anyone was willing to get. All attempts to fly over the object also failed, as whatever energy field it was emitting also caused any aircraft in the vicinity to lose control of their electrical systems. In one case, yet another helicopter is said to have crashed and killed all aboard after attempting to remove a piece of the craft's debris from the snow. It is currently unknown what became of the crash site and the alleged mysterious craft after this, and if the Russian Air Force has any knowledge of it, they are not sharing it. The Caspian Sea is clearly a place of wonders, both natural and historical. However, it is also possessed of its share of mysteries as well. From bizarre monsters of the deep to ancient mysteries, underwater castles, and UFOs, this is a place as full of enigmas as it is legends, myths, and history. What is there to be found here at the Caspian Sea? Around it, under it, and over its waves? Whatever the answer to this question may turn out to be, the Caspian Sea will likely continue to capture the imagination of mankind far into the future, as it has done for countless generations of centuries past. Sea Monster vs. Submarine The oceans of the world have long been the alleged haunt of various merfolk, sea serpents, sea monsters, and assorted hulking, mysterious beasts beyond the fringes of our understanding. Since mankind first took to the seas and started our odyssey into this vast, watery domain, sailors have been captivated by such fantastical creatures, and maritime history and folklore is thickly steeped in countless tales of mysterious monsters from the depths. However, sometimes these creatures jump out of the cloudy realm of legend and fleetingly glimpsed anomalies to come violently crashing into our reality, indeed, into our nightmares. 
Such is the story of the numerous accounts of sea monsters boldly attacking seagoing vessels, such as boats, ships, and yes, even submarines. In fact, some of the most harrowing sea monster accounts there are involve submarines. It seems that in some cases, mysterious sea creatures do not appreciate sharing the depths of our steel contraptions. How did these encounters between men and beast turn out? Let's take a look. Certainly, one of the most well-known accounts of an alleged sea monster attack on a submarine occurred during World War I, when German submarines prowled the waters of the Atlantic, looking to make trouble. For one German submarine, the UB-85, on April 30th, 1918, it was trouble that found them. The story goes that the submarine was discovered floating on the surface by the British patrol boat Coriopsis. At the time, the U-boats, as the German submarines were called, were a fairly novel and highly feared weapon of war, known for being invisible, deadly killers of the high seas. So it was quite a fortunate turn of events for the British to come across one that was basically a sitting duck out in plain view. They immediately fired upon it, and the submarine began sinking without any attempt to retaliate. Things became even weirder when the British vessel approached and the submarine crew quickly surrendered without any resistance. The crew of the British ship was mystified. The only time most crews saw a U-boat coming was when a torpedo was snaking through the sea towards them, and to have a whole submarine just sit and wait to be sunk and its crew apprehended without incident was mind-bogglingly strange. It wasn't until the Germans were brought aboard and the U-boat captain, a Captain Gunfer Kretsch, was questioned that the reason became both clearer and more bizarre. Kretsch allegedly reported that the submarine had surfaced during the night for the purpose of recharging its batteries, during which there had been a violent surge of frothing water off the starboard bow. When Kretsch and some crew members had gone to investigate, a creature the captain described as a strange beast had suddenly erupted forth from the cold, dark water and begun clambering up the side of the ship, which had caused the whole submarine to start listing to the side. The beast was described as being enormous, with a small head, with large eyes deeply set in a horned skull, and a large mouth with sharp teeth that glinted in the moonlight. The strange monster was then claimed to have reached the forward gun mount, and to have begun ferociously attacking it, chomping down on the weapon with its formidable jaws, and thrashing back and forth. Fearing that the submarine would continue to tilt under the creature's weight until the open hatch hit the sea and sank the sub, all available crewmen had opened fire on the mysterious attacker, yet the thing had refused to let go of the gun mount. It apparently had taken a sustained, intense volley of gunfire to finally make the monster relinquish its iron grip, after which it disappeared into the Black Sea its ultimate fate unknown. Final score, Submarine 1, Sea Monster 0. Inspection of the submarine in the aftermath of the sudden, brutal attack showed that in addition to the gun being mauled, scratched, and twisted, there had also been enough damage to the forward hull plates to prevent the submarine from submerging again. This was why they had been helplessly sitting out on the surface for their enemies to find them. The crew, weary and terrified by their encounter, had had no fight left in them when the British vessel had come from them and had been almost grateful to have been relieved of the ordeal. It is a frightening and dramatic account to be sure, but interestingly, the official report logged by the British concerning UB-85's capture makes no mention of such a creature, reading simply, UB-85 Cratch, KPLT Gunfer, April 30th, off Belfast Lau, gunfire sunk by the drifter, Coriopsis. Crew taken off before boat sank. There have been several theories offered as to why this might be the case. It has been suggested that the British Navy may have been attempting to cover up the real circumstances surrounding the incident. Perhaps more plausible is the idea that the British simply did not believe the ramblings of the distressed German U-boat captain, or that the report of the sea monster was completely fabricated after the fact. 
the story has very little hard evidence to back it up, and indeed, could very possibly be hearsay, or merely a scary war story, or tall tale embellished over the years to become maritime legend more than anything else. The veracity of the UB-85 encounter may be in question, but it is amazingly not the only meeting of sea monster and submarine to come from World War I. The cryptozoologist Bernard Huvelmans made mention in his book In the Wake of the Sea Serpents of yet another such violent altercation involving a German submarine, this time involving the U-boat U-28 Schmidt. The report apparently comes from a former German U-boat captain who recounted his terrifying ordeal in 1943. According to the former U-boat captain, Commander Freiherr George G. von Forstner's testimony, on July 30th, 1915, the U-28 Schmidt was prowling the waters off of a place called Fastnet Rock, 60 nautical miles south off the coast of Ireland, when it came across the British steamer Iberian, which was carrying a valuable cargo of mostly trucks and jeeps. Upon seeing such a choice target, the U-28 Schmidt immediately engaged, launching a torpedo which spectacularly blew an immense hole in the vessel, causing it to sink so fast that it was reported that its bow sprang up vertically into the air as it went down. Within moments, the Iberian had sunk beneath the rough seas of the North Atlantic, taking all of its 61 crew members to a watery grave. Around 25 seconds after sinking, there was an immense explosion underwater, thought to have been caused by some kind of explosive device on board, or perhaps an exploding boiler. Whatever the cause, the enormous detonation sent a huge plume of water into the air, as well as an eruption of debris from the ship, some of which pelted and damaged the U-28 Schmidt badly. Amongst all of the flying water and wreckage, the explosion threw up something else from the depths, of all things a giant, sea-going reptile of some sort. The explosion was so violent that the alleged sea monster was reportedly hurled completely out of the water, 80 feet into the air, after which it plummeted back into the sea to thrash and rive about in the wreckage as the horrified crew looked on before sinking into the depths, presumably dead. The monster was described as being an aquatic crocodile, around 60 feet long, with a head that tapered to a point, a long, pointed tail, and four legs with webbed feet. What was this weird sea creature, and perhaps more importantly, what was it doing, skulking about the area in the middle of a noisy naval engagement, and how did it manage to be in just the right place, directly over the sunken steamer, when it exploded so ferociously? Was this a genuine freak occurrence involving an undocumented sea monster, or is this again just tall tales, an exaggeration woven into sea lore? There is little evidence to go on with this case, other than the account given by the captain himself, as well as some additional reports given in later years by other crewmen who were present, and none of these witnesses are still alive today. With so little solid documentation, no surviving witnesses, and no further information to go on, it is quite likely we will never know for sure. <laughs>